divided into three. It's divided into three. So we know we're sinusoidal waveform for our, our power, right? In the United States, we're on 60 hertz. But we're divided up into three regions. So we're not all tied together electrically. So we're not all in the same part of the sine wave. The east is different from the west. And about two-thirds of Texas is by themselves because they're Texas and they want to do things that are themselves, right? But the goal here is, is that if we should have a catastrophic failure of our national grid, in theory, we'd only lose one of those sections because we'd be disconnected from the other group. So we would lose the eastern seaboard in California or vice versa, we'd lose the western grid, or heaven forbid we should lose Texas. But anyway, that's how that goes. But we do transfer power between the, the groups by using high voltage DC direct current. Mm -hmm. And we use very sophisticated <coughs> inverters and converters on each end of that. So we do that. For us here in Kentucky, we're in the eastern grid. American Electric Power is our timekeeper. They have an atomic clock. So they know how many counts of 60 have happened, how many waveforms we have in, in 60 seconds, right? And that's how all of our clocks work. It counts 60 cycles in and knows the second went by. So if we speed the frequency up a little bit, our clocks would go fast. If we slowed it down, all of our clocks would be slow. So they send out time corrections to us accordingly. And the amount of energy that we produce and the amount of energy that we consume dictates that frequency. It's supposed to be dead on 60 hertz, but it fluctuates, as you can imagine. Here in Kentucky, all of the utilities are highly integrated. They're highly integrated, okay? And the Public Service Commission, to which all the utilities have to follow their rules, except for the Tennessee Valley Authority, because they're their own deal, they're appropriated by, their funding is appropriated by con Congress directly. They're a federal agency. They don't <coughs> adhere to the Public Service Commission rules, but we do, the rest of us do. And they encourage to us to plan our grid as if we were one utility. We have definite service boundaries, right? If you buy a house, you don't have the choice of who you're going to get to buy your electricity from, right? It's set. There's service territory boundaries that don't change. But the way that we get the power to you there, we didn't want to have a whole bunch of redundant power lines running through the state of Kentucky. So they said, why don't you just plant it as if you guys are just one? And I think that's a pretty good approach. So we have a lot of our substations at my utility that hang on Kentucky Utilities and, and Louisville Gas and Electric and vice versa. So when it's not your utility, you call a foreign utility. So I have a lot of facilities that are fed from foreign utilities. So here's what our grid looks like in Kentucky. Now it looks kind of impressive right here, but if you were to look at the voltage levels of these lines, it's not very impressive. Most of it is below 100 kV. We've got 2,800 miles on my utility in 89 counties at 69,000 volts. And 69,000 volts is nearly the bottom voltage that you have for transmission. The next voltage is 115, 138,000, 161,000, uh, 230,000 volts, 345,000 volts, 500,000 volts, and 765,000 volts. So at 69 kV, that's almost distribution, what we would call it. So the grid's not really that robust here in the state of Kentucky. Where we have the high voltage lines is where we intertie with neighboring states so that we can bring power from them to serve us, all right? But you can see we don't have a lot of redundancy. If you're brown, which is, I think, the Tennessee Valley Authority, you don't see a lot of red, and you don't see a lot of purple. You don't see a whole lot of overlapping color because we tried to plan it as one system here for the state. So let's get to the smart grid. And there are thousands of definitions, and this is just one that I particularly gravitated to. It's from a consulting firm called Burns and McDonald. It says the smart grid is the convergence of information, right? Not just electrical delivery and generation, but information and operational technology to help us direct power flow applied to the electric grid, allowing sustainable options. And we have a definition of sustainable tonight. To customers, what? Allowing sustainable options to customers and improved security, reliability, and efficiency to utilities. So that's the goal, right? Improved security, reliability, and efficiency to utilities. But it has what I like 
this customer piece. All right, let's get the customers in here. Let's not let the utilities do everything. Let's see how we do that. Now, the Department of Energy has 13 national labs, I believe, and this is one of them, the National uh, Energy Technology Laboratory, and they've made up seven de seven points that a smart grid is supposed to contain. And I sort of subscribe to them. Some of them could be a little bit tweaked, and some of them bleed over into other bullet points. But let's read them. So enable active participation by consumers. Well, that's what I like the best, right? Because we need to get you guys educated and know how you're using electricity in a smart way. So kind of like what Shane's dashboard was showing you, he's trying to give you some education on what those different appliances are using in the office. Accommodate all generation and storage options, right? Solar panels and windmills and all that kind of storage. We'll talk about that. And they will do product service for the markets. Well, who wants that? The consumer does, right? So new products for you guys. That's why I kind of think it's the same as the first one. Optimize asset utilization. Operate efficiently. Let's use the grid that we have to its fullest extent. Take advantage of what we've already got out there in place. Provide power quality for the digital economy. All right? So all this new sophisticated microprocessor and base electronics is very sensitive to voltage fluctuations and current such fluctuations and they don't behave properly. Operate resiliently against attack and natural disaster, so that's kind of a, the 911 fallout. And anticipate and respond to system disturbances. Self-heal. Have you ever heard of the term the self-healing grid? What you're going to do there is if you've got a problem on the grid, you want to minimize the number of customers that are out of service and restore as many customers to service as you possibly can. So let's start with utility efficiency efforts. I mean, there's got to be some motivation for an electric utility to deploy a lot of new technology in the smart grid. So what is it? Well, we want to, you know, increase our efficiency. So how do we do that? We want to keep our generating costs as low as possible, right? We want to keep it as low as possible. So then our product can be priced as low as possible to the end consumer. So that kind of makes sense. How can we go about doing that? Well, generation costs they differ based on how much it costs to build that plant, right? It costs a lot more money to build a nuclear plant than it does to build one that burns coal, for instance, right? And it depends upon what type of fuel that you use. Well, if you use renewable sources, then the fuel's free, essentially, right? So that's kind of cool. And then <coughs> we also have purchases from other utilities. And that's something to be avoided, right? Most often unless you've got a great utility like the TVA as your next door neighbor, because they got a lot of electricity, and we can buy it cheap. So that helps us, but that's starting to go away. All right, we need to, on our efficiency efforts, educate the consumer, right? We need to help the consumer understand how to do conservation. We actually go in your homes and business and we'll do energy audits and tell you where you're using too much energy here and there. So that's part of the utility efforts. Now let's look at this. This is a daily load profile for my electric utility. This is my whole electric utility. covers 89 counties of the state, which is about two-thirds. It's mostly rural, none of the urban areas. And at midnight, we're using this much electricity. One o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, and then all of a sudden, what's happening? We're starting to use more, right? What's happening? People are waking up. People are taking showers. Now what's taking off here? Business. Yeah, now we need to differentiate this curve. There are basically two types. One for the wintertime and one for the summertime. Which one do you think this is? Summertime. Summertime. What's happening during the day? Air conditioning, Air conditioning loads kicking in, okay? Industries are, are coming online, businesses are coming online, and then what's happening over here? Dude, everybody's coming home.